Welcome everyone. If you're joining us live or watching the recording, this is our back to school educational class for 2022. Um, really with a focus just on helping um, our kids, whether you're a teacher or a parent sending your kids to school, really have their best year yet. So just for starters, I thought I would show just kind of a list of some of my favorite doTERRA products specifically on uh, what we use to help our kids um, have a successful day, um, starting that day out um, well at home, transitioning into being focused um, at school and then having a, an evening where they can get all the jitters out from the school day and then settle down and go to bed at night. Um, my name is Andrea Larson. I am a nurse practitioner and my husband, Brett, is actually an elementary principal and we live in Iowa and we have four kids, three of which are currently school age and our youngest is about to turn three, so he's not quite in preschool, but um, we love children. We uh, have a passion for seeing kids be successful in school and for kids to be not only successful in school, but happy and healthy. I don't want to pretend like um, our kids are perfect because they're definitely not. Um, but between both of our professional careers and then our experience as parents, we've gained a lot of um, practice and um, experience. Uh -huh. yeah. Oh, shoot, shoot, hold on. There we go, okay. Just as you're joining, if you could mute yourself, that'd be helpful. Um, anyway, we've gained a lot of experience um, through a lot of trial and error. Um, really, my fear of our second son, Bryce, failing at school was really what drove me to um, look for uh, a different approach to helping him. Um, he hadn't even started school yet, but he was having a very hard time sleeping at night. He was um, running laps around our dining room table when we would try to sit and eat a meal together. And my husband and I were extremely concerned that um, it would turn into a situation where he would require medication to be able to focus at school because he did meet all of the clinical criteria just at the little age of three um, for having ADHD. And um, as somebody who is trained in prescribing those medicines, I was terrified to give them to my son because I know what the potential consequences are of taking those medications long-term. So thankfully, I reached out to my best friend from college um, who I thought was into all the voodoo. <laughs> And asked if she had any, any suggestions because I, I wanted to have an open mind about treating um, his focus issues and his sleep issues um, naturally before turning to medication. So um, for teachers, you can see there on the left, that's kind of a little brief uh, supply list that I would totally recommend for school. And we'll go through a lot of these things um, as we uh, go through the presentation. The one I want to highlight on here is the Mito2 Max. So that's a natural energy supplement. Energy is so huge and teachers definitely need more of it. I don't know how they do it, how they manage all these little people all day long and stay engaged. Um, but Mito2 Max is a really great option. Also for teachers in September, there is a brand new product line coming out um, that really has a massive impact on energy. So there'll be more information um, to come on that. For parents, uh, make sure you have a diffuser. Um, the emotional aromatherapy collection is a really great option to help naturally um, manage all the different emotions that our kids have surrounding school and when they get home from school. And then um, our teenagers, you know, they want to be cool and smell good and look pretty. So um, having a diffuser, that in tune roller is going to be great for um, natural focus, um, more, more of an adult blend. We'll talk about a kid's focus blend later on. 
And then um, tea tree is great for acne. And then just lavender, lemon, and peppermint. You can do so much with those three essential oils and really help um, your teen to have a great year. And then at the bottom, the kids collection. We'll talk a little bit about that and some different essential oils to swap out um, a safer cleaning option. Okay, so we're going to cover a lot of things. Um, so this will be a little bit fast and furious as far as information goes, but I wanted to try to touch on a lot of things that I get questions for or questions about from parents. Um, and so really the foundation of everything, whether we're talking about focus at school or our kids getting sick, really starts with nutrition. Um, so breakfasts that contain high carbohydrate content and high sugar content only last in their little bodies and even in our bodies as adults for about 30 to 45 minutes, which actually leads to a sugar crash as the child begins her morning or his morning at school. Our body breaks down carbs into sugar, which makes our blood sugar go up and then down again quickly. And this actually can result in behaviors um, that can be observed in children, including inattention, anxiety, mood swings, tantrum, and even memory issues. So you can see there um, with the thumbs down. So avoid high carb breakfasts like cereal, um, Pop Tarts, white bread, mini muffins, granola bars. These all, in theory, sound like a great option for breakfast, but they actually have can have a really negative effect on your child's um, performance in school. Um, also avoid anything with added sugar and anything that has a seed oil in it. So like um, sunflower seed oil or um, uh, corn oil. These oils are inflammatory and can cause inflammation in the child's nervous system and can lead to uh, difficulties at school. So what are some um, good options for a breakfast to start your child's day off? Um, proteins, fats, and fibers are actually absorbed slowly and do not cause a blood sugar spike. So our brain actually utilizes about 25% of the food, vitamins, and minerals that we eat at each meal. Our brain alone uses that. So if you start your child's day out with a high carb and high sugar meal, their brain is basically being fueled by sugar which leads to the memory issues. So um, instead try um, yogurt with no added sugar with some granola and fruit or sourdough toast with eggs and avocado. Just a second, I'm gonna, there's some banana in here. Um, peanut butter, banana protein smoothie. This is one of our favorites at our house. We do um, the doTERRA chocolate protein. Um, Truvani is also another good company with more of a plant-based um, protein powder if you're looking to avoid whey. Um, scrambled eggs with peppers and cheese, get some extra um, veggies in there. Overnight oats is actually a really, really awesome breakfast because when you add chia seeds, which actually when they absorb um, liquid are kind of like a tapioca con uh, consistency um, and then add fruit and honey. Um, overnight oats have slowly digested carbs and lots of protein. So this breakfast will really sustain your child and help them um, perform in the classroom um, um, eating that for breakfast. And then either, even just having peanut butter toast with a banana is a much better option than white bread with um, sugary jam. Okay, okay. so let's go into school lunch. Um, so my husband <laughs> feels very conflicted about this because the school lunch program is really how a school system pays for their cooks. And you need money, obviously, to pay your employees, but... Unfortunately, what's happened over the last two years in particular because of COVID, um, there's been a big shift into an individual serving type of uh, uh, distribution of food for children. And really, uh, these processed foods are packed with sugar, salt, and unhealthy fats. 
in addition to the chemicals that provide taste and long-term shelf stability. Um, and they can make your nervous system flare up or inflamed, and it can even make things like eczema way worse. So um, I would encourage you to consider, potentially consider meal planning and then packing a lunch with fresh food. Um, so a couple of my tips are to avoid plastic containers. Instead, use silicone and tin plastics, even if they're BPA free, um, have chemicals in them that get into your food and are harmful for kids and adults hormones. Um, use two ice packs to keep your food safe. So put an ice pack underneath the food and an ice pack on top of the food. And then avoid processed prepackaged food. So there are a lot of kids at our school that do bring their lunch, um, but it's, you know, Lunchables and packages of chips and um, little mini muffins. And, and those foods just don't serve your child um, to sustain them throughout the afternoon, like we talked about in the previous slide. And then um, really look closely and try to avoid food dyes. Um, food dyes are additives that are used to change the color of food. Um, and it's typically just chemicals that they use. So these um, food dyes are usually found in candy, snacks, soft drinks, um, and desserts. And multiple studies have shown that um, these food dyes have been linked to allergies and asthma, skin rashes, eczema, um, behavioral issues in children, cancer, nervous system inflammation, and even damage to the brain over time. Uh, there was a randomized study in England that found that children who ingested food dyes and the preservative sodium benzenate had a significant increase in hyperactivity. So if you have a child who um, has a difficult time sitting still or focusing at school, even just even the only thing you do is remove dye from their diet, um, chances are you're gonna see a significant improvement in behaviors. Um, this is a, a, for an allergy-friendly lunch and snack guide. Um, this is a holistic pediatrician who put this cookbook together. And I've gotten a lot of really great recipes that my kids love out of this um, cookbook. And I put the website there where you can go, it's 12 bucks, so it's not too expensive. Um, but it's given me a lot of really great ideas for what we're going to use um, or do to pack lunches for this upcoming school year. Okay, so doTERRA um, has a kids collection. So one of the ways that we love to support our kids through the school year is using essential oils. So when we uh, use essential oils, we can support our nervous system which supports our brain, we can support our immune health, our respiratory health, our skin health, all these sorts of things. Um, because our, our body recognizes these molecules and knows what to do with them, um, we oftentimes get better results using essential oils than we do um, even with prescription medications. So uh, the stronger roller is doTERRA's protective blend that's a little bit gentler version of OnGuard. Um, it promotes feelings of wellness and vitality. It can um, soothe skin irritations like eczema and can even be good for emotions. Um, it smells so good. This is a great oil to use to both prevent illness and um, treat an illness if a child were to become sick. You can roll this up and down the spine that stimulates your lymph system. You can roll this on the bottom of your child's feet or if they have a sore throat, you can roll this just right underneath their jaw to kind of where those, those lymph nodes, those bumps are that you get when you have a sore throat. You can roll this just right over there to help ease a, a sore throat. Brave is doTERRA's um, courage blend. I know um, uh, there's a lot of nerves that go with a, a new school year, a new classroom, a new teacher, a new mix of students that you're with. And um, brave can really help a child feel empowered and uh, feel confident and courageous in a new atmosphere. Um, when we use essential oils in this way to help support emotions, when we breathe them in through our nose, 
um, the oils hit this um, olfactory bulb that sits right between our eyes underneath our underneath the bridge of our nose. And it sends a signal to our brain and activates our limbic system. And our limbic system really is what controls our cortisol and epinephrine. These are like stress hormones. Um, it, it helps calm them down. Um, so a child doesn't feel as overwhelmed, um, that not in their stomach cannot, can be released. Um, essential oils are a great way to support our kids emotionally. And that leads into calmer. This is doTERRA's restful blend for kids. I love that these oils come pre-diluted safe for kids. So you can use these right on a child's skin without having to worry about diluting them further. Um, Cal or Calmer is their restful blend, which is great to use at bedtime or even a child that's having a temper tantrum or just feels really worked up and overwhelmed. Um, you can roll this just right on the temples um, on either side of the eye, you know, avoiding the eye. And if you feel in the back of your head, there's a notch right kind of where um, your occipital bone and that base of your skull and your spine starts right in there is a really great place to put essential oils to support the brain too. With the kids line, you can see there's little pictures. So above the stronger, you can see the little stick figure man and above brave, there's a heart and above calmer, there's a brain. So that is an easy way for kids to be able to know what is this oil going to do for me? So stronger is going to help my body be healthy. Brave is going to help my emotions, my heart. And calmer is going to help my brain calm down. So it's a really uh, great picture so kids know, can learn how to support themselves at an early age. And then uh, thinker is the focus blend for kids. And um, this is Bryce's favorite oil to take with him to school. Uh, this has that little brain, so we know that it's going to support uh, mental clarity. And it's a perfect, it's a perfect um, addition to part of a study time routine uh, just to help calm all the um, extra brain activity down so a child can really focus in and get some homework done or get other tasks um, that they need to get done um, completed. Steady is, is the grounding blend. And this is more for emotional um, support. You see that heart on there. Really helps to uh, create a balanced, calming aroma. Um, and then uh, encourages and affirms kind of a, a grounded mood. So when I think of grounding, um, I think of like a tree with roots. If a tree doesn't have deep roots, it's going to be flopping around in the wind. And when we can help our kids feel grounded, then their emotions aren't going to be flopping around all over the place. So steady um, is one of those ways that you can help support child's emotions so they don't feel like they're going all over the place. Tamer is the digestive blend for kids. This has spearmint in it, which is a gentler form of peppermint um, to help with uh, digestive issues. So maybe if a child that gets um, car sick on the bus ride home, um, sending tamer with them, they can just roll it in a clockwise motion right around their belly button to help relieve um, some of those nauseous feelings. Or, you know, maybe they feel um, uh, feel sick after school lunch or they ate something that didn't agree with them, or they feel sick because of nerves. Tamer can also help relieve nerves and um, can uh, help relieve that um, that tummy that tummy issue. And then rescuer, so this is like the kids version of deep blue. So great for comforting growing pains and um, can also uh, soothe skin issues as well. Okay, so next topic, we're gonna talk about just some um, back to school supplements. So ideally our kids would be getting all of their vitamins and minerals from whole food. But currently, the statistics show that in the United States, two of every three kids, American kids, is actually getting the majority of their calories from ultra processed food. And I could spend a long time talking about that, how we're going to have a, we have an increased um, rate of obesity in children. Um, we have children with high blood pressure at a very early age, um, early onset diabetes, all of these things really can have lifelong implications. Um, but we're talking about nutrition at the moment. 
and to uh, help fill in the gaps that almost all kids in America have because of a poor diet. Um, vitamins actually can play a really important role in staying healthy and helping them focus at school. So, but how do you know which um, vitamins are good? So you want to avoid sugar, food dyes, artificial flavors, seed oils, sorbitol, and dextrose, just to name a few. And so these are um, just a few that I picked that I um, see every time I go to Target, but they actually have food dyes in them. They have sugar in them. Um, they have artificial flavors in them to make them taste good for kids. So you're really not getting, you're getting more harm than benefit from taking these, unfortunately. So here is what um, we take at our house. So um, the probiotic is probably the most important um, supplement I would recommend that kids take. So um, there was a study done um, in the New York school system over the entire course of a school year. And the kids that took a probiotic every day were 70% less likely to require an antibiotic during the school year. That's a huge shift in health just by adding a probiotic. Um, this uh, PB Assist Junior is a powder and you just rip the top off and it's like a pixie stick. So it tastes, it's, uh, it's naturally sweet. There's no added sugar and you can just pour it right on the kid's tongue or pour it in a spoon and have them eat it that way. Um, but my kids line up for this because it tastes so good. And usually I want to sneak one too, because I, I love how it tastes. Um, we have both good and bad bacteria in our gut, and we need to have good bacteria in there um, because most of our immune systems actually found in our gut. Germs enter through our mouth, and if we have that good bacteria, that good bacteria can eliminate those germs before they have an opportunity to uh, make a child ill. The IQ Mega, so this is doTERRA's fish oil. Um, we get way too many omega-6s and need omega-3. Um, omega-3, especially for kids that have hyperactivity or difficulty focusing is super important um, so because scary. you can think of it like it's, uh, it's lubricating, um, lubricating the brain. What? Can I change my panties because they're wet? Yes. There we go. <laughs> um, you can think of it like uh, that um, fish oil is just lubricating um, those synapses in our brain, helping things run smoother. It also helps with skin, so it can help um, relieve eczema and then um, can su support healthy joint function, heart health, all of these great things um, to help our kids as they um, grow, as they're rapidly growing. The A to Z chewables are a great multivitamin option. Um, they don't have any sugar in them. They have um, vitamin A, C, E, um, and a, com a complex um, mix of the B vitamins, all that help fill in these nutritional gaps that kids have. And then up at the top, I added some other things that we like. So a lot of kids are deficient in magnesium, and that can lead to... Uh, Whoops, sorry. I just need to mute a few people again. There we go, okay. Um, a deficiency in magnesium can really lead to difficulty focusing um, and even like ADHD type symptoms. And magnesium can also help you sleep at night. Um, this is a powder that you can add to uh, just water and it's kind of orange flavored. Um, so it tastes really good. Um, these are from Designs for Health. And it's a high quality uh, supplement company that is the same level as quality as doTERRA. And you actually have to have a medical license to be able to order it. So if you want to order something from there, you can type in Andrea Larson as your um, ordering code, and then you'll be able to order the products off of there. Um, this liposomal vitamin C. So liposomal vitamin C is really the vitamin C that you want because it's highly bioavailable, meaning it will get absorbed very easily. And this is a liquid as well, so easy for kids. And then extra vitamin D3, you want D or vitamin D with K2 in there um, because it really increases absorption. And then if you have a child that 
like really will not eat anything healthy and you're really struggling um, getting the fruits and vegetables and the healthy fibers in, these uh, Juice Plus chewables are a good option. Um, they come, the Juice Plus stuff comes in capsules, but um, we like the chewables specifically for the kids just because they're a little bit easier. And it's a blend of uh, juiced vegetables and fruits actually um, to help fill in some of the, those nutritional gaps. And then the On Guard Soft Gels, these are like a natural antibiotic. So if you feel like you're coming down with something, um, these are actually very small and very easy for a child to swallow. Uh, my five-year-old can swallow these. He just puts it on his tongue. We have him drink out of a straw and kind of tuck his chin down because that kind of, that closes the airway and opens up the swallowing tube if you tuck the chin. And then he just drinks water through the straw and that on guard plus soft gel can just slip right down. Um, it's got on guard, which is their immune protecting blend that's been shown in clinical trials to be able to stop the replication of the influenza virus with other high powered um, immune support oils like oregano, Melissa and black pepper. Um, so as far as cleaning, um, a study of 9,000 children in Europe showed a correlation between using bleach products and viral illnesses. So in homes where bleach was used at least once a week, the kids in those homes actually had higher rates of influenza and recurrent tonsillitis. So the more polluted your environment is, like the air inside of your house or the air inside of a classroom, the more likely kids are to have asthma, allergies, and even get sick with viral illnesses. So this means that our cleaners, our water, our air quality, our makeup, the lotions, the candles, the wax melts, the perfumes, the body sprays, all of this stuff can either make you, your kids healthier or can be potentially what's causing them to be sick all the time. So this is what we use. We really love um, these on guard hand sanitizing wipes. There is alcohol in these, so they're antiseptic. They kill 99.9% .9 of germs. And um, you can send a pack of these individual, uh, individually wrapped ones with your kids to school. They can wipe down their desk with it. They can wash, wipe off their hands. Um, and there's aloe extract in there too, so it won't leave their hands dried out. And then the On Guard hand sanitizing mist, this is uh, what you can swap out instead of the alcohol hand sanitizer. It kills 99.9% .9 of germs. It smells like cinnamon, so it smells really good. And it's easy, they can just spritz it right on their um, hands and they're good to go. If you are a DIY kind of person, Here's a recipe for a hand spray. Um, it's two tablespoons of fractionated coconut oil or a carrier oil of your choice, some aloe vera, 20 to 30 drops of On Guard, and then two teaspoons of rubbing alcohol, or you can use, um, uh, I'm, not, I'm not much of a, or a liquor drinker, but you can use liquor actually <laughs> instead of the rubbing alcohol um, to make your hand sanitizer. Okay, so we have a special treat. We actually have a teacher, um, Rachel Morehouse, who's gonna share a little bit um, from her perspective, how she uses essential oils in her classroom. Hey everyone. So like Andy said, I, my name is Rachel Morehouse. I have been teaching, well, we're going on year 10 this year, which is exciting. Also crazy to think about. So I wanted just to share a couple of things. I'm also a mom of two girls. So I see it from the mom perspective that Andi has been sharing about. And then as the classroom teacher perspective as well. Um, a couple of big things that you will run into as a teacher and a mom, hopefully not a mom, right? Cause you want to deal with lice and pink eye as a mom, but it could happen. Um, we dealt with pink eye a couple of times this year and we saw it um, in people's classrooms as well. Um, and so to get rid of pink eye, instead of having to go to make an appointment, I mean, pink eye is pretty noticeable, right? You can just, you can see it on the eye. So avoiding having to go to the doctor, avoiding having to take time off. Um, we have cleared up, cleared up pink eye in our house multiple times. 
um, with rose and tea tree touch. So they'll just, we just take it and we roll it like right along, like the underneath the eye, your eye socket bone. I don't know what the actual word for this is. <laughs> There's a name for it, I'm sure, but this bone here and then up and over. Um, and then we put the rose on first and then the tea tree and we did it every couple hours. Obviously make sure to avoid getting it actually in the eyeball. And then lice. So during the school year, I see the whole entire building. So I see 600 kids. So if I hear like rumbling that lice is around, I will just take um, my doTERRA shampoo. I'll add a couple drops of tea tree oil into that and then I'll just wash with that. Um, but there are some really good recipes on here too for lice. And so this would be if, um, I was reading this company. You are right, Danny. Um, it does take longer. And so going back to the pink eye, you have to like, um, for daycare purposes, my daycare provider is all about essential oils. So she was fine with my girls not going back on antibiotics. My school, however, um, that was a different, a different story there. So I had to kind of work some magic to get them back before a certain amount of time for that. But it does work as long as you are exactly patient and consistent. But back to the lice. So this would be if you actually, this top one looks like if you'd actually have lice in your hair. Um, we have been fortunate enough to not have to try that, but it is a recipe that I will be using if we are unlucky and have to use it. And then this is another option for repellent uh, on the bottom, the white box. And so that is combining some tea trees, some rosemary, cedarwood, and witch hazel. Witch hazel is just a really good um, mixer to get the oils mixed up. Uh, I would assume you could use vodka for that one as well if you have it in your house. I know some people do. Um, and then mix it all together, put it in a spray bottle, and then spray in your hair every morning. So instead of like me using the tea tree just in my, um, my I was going to say laundry detergent, because that's what I was thinking of what I'm talking about next. <laughs> Your shampoo, your what the, the, the my shampoo. Yeah, yeah. Um, that would be another good option as well. You go ahead, Andy, for the next one. All right. So first and foremost, as a teacher, our job is not easy. It is stressful. Um, I wish I would. There's a so how many decisions we make is like over a thousand decisions in a day. Like split decisions, instant. And so first and foremost, it's so important. And as a teacher, we hear it nonstop to take care of yourself. Um, but if you're not taking care of yourself first, you're going to have implications on your students in your classroom. And so a couple of ways that I do that as a teacher, um, Andy already shared some of the supplements that I take, the um, probiotics, the, you didn't talk about lifelong vitality, but we take that as an adult, as a teacher, it's really good to boost my immune system and give me energy that I need. The Mito Max I take as a teacher. And on guard, um, in my desk drawer, I keep a little cute little container. If you're going to convention or you know somebody that's going to convention, doTERRA sells these, I wish I had one with me. Mine is upstairs getting ready to go to the, yes, something like that. I keep that in my desk drawer. And so I have on guard in there and I have all of the oils that I use on a mostly daily basis. I have one for stress. So I have an adaptive roller. I love balance. I have a balance roller. I have on guard because I use that for immune. Say someone throws up in my room, you better believe I'm going behind my desk and rolling on on guard on the, at least the back of my spine and I'm on my wrist. Um, and I also have my supplements in there. So that way I have an easy access. I actually have a few teachers in my school that know I love doTERRA. And so I've had them multiple times go, hey, do you have lavender? I have a bug bite. Or do you have deep blue? Because I have a really bad kink in my neck and I cannot make it through this day. So it's also nice for to be helping other teachers out as well. Now, diffusers as a teacher um, is an interesting topic. So up until two years ago, I was allowed to have a diffuser in my classroom. And then OSHA came and OSHA saw people with diffusers and said, nope, can't have them. Um, because there's been lawsuits from families that say it's hurt their kids. They've had allergic reaction, yada, yada, yada. My school district wasn't willing to fight that battle basically. So unfortunately I don't have a diffuser in my room. I wish I did. When I did have a diffuser, some of those that are on that would be the oils that I would be diffusing. I would be diffusing on guard as a teacher, as a parent and a mom, you can just tell when like the sick sickness is coming up. You can just kind of feel it too. Like there's more people out. 
And so I would be diffusing on guard during there. If I myself was sick, I would definitely be doing it too, just to help protect the kids so that they don't get sick. Anytime we were maybe taking a test, I noticed my students were coming in a little lethargic, definitely in the morning. Um, I would be putting wild orange and peppermint in my diffuser for energy. Um, I also use motivate a lot as well for that. And then if I notice like maybe we were going through something hard as a class, right? Some, you know, sometimes you, I mean, you spend so much time together. I teach elementary. So when I was in the classroom in fifth grade, they spent so much time together that there would be some like drama and that kind of stuff and everyone's mood, they would be in a funk. Um, and so I would be using balance and adaptive for that during those times. What did Jess say? Students love when, yes, wild orange and energy are phenomenal. You are correct and adaptive. See, I'm a little jealous, Jess, that you get to still diffuse in your classroom because I do not, and I don't like it. Um, and then for cleaning purposes. So like I said, I see so many kids um, that I try my really, really best to clean at the end of the day. It's not realistic for me to clean in between my classes, but I have tons of, um, the picture is of the hand wash, which is awesome, but I love the hand sanitizer spray. Um, I'll spray my keyboard at the end of the day and my mouse just to be extra clean. And then I make my own spray. Thank you for going to the next slide. Um, I love that to wipe off my desks, um, to wipe off my students' desk some commonly used things, especially when I don't do it every day, but if I know that I had a kid in my room that was really sick um, or also not just even sickness, like I teach kindergartners and if you have a kindergartner, they are messy. And so like sometimes my tables will be full of glue and paper and markers and crayons. And so I'll take out that spray and that'll get it off and it'll just clean it on its own. Um, I have not tried that bottom one, but that looks like one that would smell amazing and be really good just to have like when they're kind of stinky. I'm thinking that's the purpose of that one, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Instead of maybe I could, I could maybe, I might try that this year because they can't yell at me for having a spray um, and spray that around in my room. Also, like I said, I teach K-5. And so if you're unfortunate to have the older kids in the afternoon after they've had recess, they come in a little fresh. So that would be nice. to have. <laughs> but those are my common things that I use as a teacher. I'm sure there are other teachers on here that use other things too, and they work really well for them. Um, but there'll be time at the end to have questions too, and I'll stick around. So if you have questions on stuff I use in my classroom, I'm happy to answer them. Awesome. Thanks, Rachel. Yep. So now we'll talk a little bit about um, some of the emotions, just uh, easing anxious feelings. So um, young adults, there was a research study, young adults were infected with the common cold virus. And those um, participants in the study who had been dealing with chronic stress, so meaning they had been stressed out about something for more than one month, developed cold symptoms more often than those participants who were less stressed. So the higher your stress levels are, the higher your cortisol is, and that's your stress hormone, um, that, fight, that fight or flight hormone. Um, so the higher your stress levels are, the higher your cortisol is, the lower the number of helpful immune cells are circulating in your body. So stress management is a super important part about not only being able to think clearly, but staying healthy at school too. So doTERRA has um, this adaptive line and it's their calming blend. This was put to together by um, chemists um, using essential oils that in particular help with relaxation, promoting peace and um, relieving feelings of overwhelm, anxiousness, irritability, and even helping um, you sleep more restfully at night. So adaptive is really the all encompassing toolbox to help the mind and body stay balanced when you are experiencing a lot of stress, okay? So there's the adaptive capsules. If a child is younger than the age of 12, they can take one of these capsules every day. If your child's older than 12 or an adult or a teacher, you can take two of these capsules a day. 
Then there's the calming blend. So this would be great in a diffuser or if you wanted to uh, make your own roller bottle. But then uh, there's a roller ball of the adaptive blend um, that is just, it just smells wonderful. It's so relaxing. So what you can do is you just roll it right on the inside of your forearms and have them kind of rub their forearms together. Roll them right out here on the sides of the neck. There's a really important nerve that goes from our brain down to our heart called the vagus nerve that runs right here on either side of the neck. And so rolling oil right over that just helps to relax that nerve. That vagus nerve has a lot to do with our emotions. And then you can put the adaptive on the bottoms of your feet too. The bottoms of our feet are a easy place to put oils because the skin is not sensitive down there and there's big pores on the bottom of our feet. So they absorb a lot of essential oil. Um, we'll talk about ADHD at the very end, but these adaptive um, capsules are fantastic if you have somebody with a clinical diagnosis of ADHD. Um, managing the serotonin and dopamine and some of those misfiring neurons um, that are going on um, leading to some of those difficulties. And then here are some um, diffuser blends. We talked about how powerful our sense of smell is. So um, these are um, like a mood boosting um, blend. Two drops of tangerine, two drops of lemongrass and two drops of spearmint. I actually really love spearmint and the adaptive calming blend together. It really brings out the mint and I think it smells really great. Um, Serene Peace, Balance, Serenity, and Citrus Bliss. That smells, that sounds like it would smell amazing. And then of course, a back to school blend, Frankincense, which helps support your immune system and your emotions. Wild Orange, which is very uplifting and Peppermint, which is also energizing and uplifting. So, re so healthy sleep habits. So research shows that getting less than six hours of sleep at night quadruples your chance of getting a cold. So don't wait until the night before to start working on your sleep habits. I would suggest starting today. <laughs> so at night is actually when our immune system wakes up and is most active. The less sleep you get, the more likely you are to get sick. Um, so this is what our families um, night routine is. So we go to bed and wake up at pretty much the same time every single day. And we use the bedroom for only sleeping. So no screens. So my husband and I charge our phones out in the kitchen. Um, we do have a TV in our room if we are watching a game or something, but we try not to turn that on. Um, but our kids do not have any screens in their room either. So um, what we do is we eat supper as a family, um, if my husband's able to be home. Uh, we then play outside if possible, even if it's winter, we bundle them up and we send them out um, to run around. Then we come in, we take showers and do bath time. Um, they, everybody lines up and brushes their teeth. Then we get our diffusers going and I'll share some of my favorite um, sleep blends here. There's one here on this page and some more in the next. And then we sometimes, depending on uh, how many times a week um, we've already done it. So maybe two or three times a week, we'll do symphony of cell back rubs from mom. <laughs> My boys love this, you guys. It's not only oils, it's an oil back rub. Um, if you don't know what symphony of cells is, we talk about it a lot in our team. It This book has 40 different protocols for specific health conditions. Um, everything from sleep to anxiety to um, you're improving your immune function to your cardiovascular health. There's lots of different ways you can use this book, but not only are the essential oils very powerful, but that touch connection with your child, intentionally sitting down with them and just focusing on them and only them for five minutes really can um, really have a powerful connection with you and your child. And then um, after we've got our diffusers going and everybody's oiled up for the night, uh, we read books for about 30 minutes. And that's sometimes us reading um, books to our kids. Sometimes that's just our kids sitting in their bed, um, listening to a book on CD. We're big fans of audiobooks, And we do that for about 30 minutes. And then we say prayers with our kids and then it's lights out. We do this 95% of the time. And our kids, even from the age of like three months old, even younger than that, I would say six weeks have slept through the night. 
Um, so we've had really great success with um, good sleep at our house. And this is one of the reasons I got into oils in the first place. So that safe space um, blend is one of my favorites. It's lavender, copaiba, and balance. Um, sweet dreams, you can go ahead and screenshot this if you want and use some of this. Uh, which one, where is it? Oh, so uh, I don't know if I see it on here. So the sweet dreams, I do uh, lavender, copaiba, and juniper berry. That's one I really love. Otherwise, um, the serene is really great. Actually, they're all really great. These are definitely the top um, blends that I do. If you want something simple, um, Air X and lavender, two drops of each in a diffuser is wonderful because it supports sleep, your immune system, and respiratory. So you're covering three super important bases and your child is kind of a captive audience while they're sleeping. Your immune system is fun active at night. And so it can really help keep your kids healthy, help them sleep better. And that will translate into a better day at school. Okay, and I don't really have a lot to say on daily movement, um, but your kids getting out and being active is super important, not only for them um, physically, but emotionally and mentally too. Um, numerous studies have shown that daily, that people who move daily for about 30 to 60 minutes, both adults and kids have less flu, less colds, and if they do get sick, their illnesses last shorter. Um, they are just in general overall healthier. So get outside, even if it's cold, bundle your kids up and um, let them play. Okay, so we've talked a lot about all the things we've talked about so far really play into ADD and ADHD management. Um, here are just, it's a brief list of kind of a, an over, a, a synopsis of what we talked about already. So really eliminate food dye from your diet. That can make, right there, can make a big difference in child behavior. Um, take an omega and a multivitamin. So, um, ADHD and ADD are strongly associated with mineral deficiencies, um, deficiencies like zinc, B12, vitamin D, thymine, iron, magnesium, um, and the uh, supplements we talked about on uh, all those pages ago um, really help fill in those nutritional deficiencies and can help uh, alleviate the symptoms without even needing to be on medication. Consider testing for H. pylori um, via a GI map. So H. pylori is extremely common. It's an opportunistic bacteria that grows in your gastrointestinal tract, and it's passed very easily in families. So if one person in your family has it, you can pass it to another family member just by sharing a cup or sharing a spoon or a parent licking or, you know, licking off a pacifier for a child and you can give your child H. pylori. Um, generally speaking, it can be asymptomatic for some people until it, the bacteria grows so much that they can have heartburn or um, like constipation and diarrhea, irritable bowel kind of stuff. Um, but H. pylori can also manifest as um, behavioral issues in kids because it can cause the nervous system to be inflamed. So your child can have anxiety or wild mood swings, and it really can be because this H. pylori is inflaming their brain, uh, making um, it difficult to function normally. Um, you can treat H. pylori um, a couple different ways. The uh, medical community treats it with antibiotics, and sometimes that is necessary, but there are a lot of natural solutions um, for treating H. pylori. Um, if you're concerned that maybe that's going on with your child, I'd be happy to have a conversation with you about um, how we could um, address that. And then good sleep hygiene. Um, sleep deficiency is just like throwing fuel on the fire of a child that has AD. D or ADHD. So um, there's a strong correlation with getting enough sleep and those behaviors. Uh, managing stress, regular exercise, and then detoxing your environment. Um, and, you know, in addition to eliminating the dyes from your diet, eliminating the processed foods as well. Um, foods that have been known to increase behaviors include sugar, caffeine, 
alcohol, all ultra processed foods and fast foods. So if those are part of your regular diet, you really need to consider um, eliminating those altogether. Um, because like we talked about the very, you know, the beginning of this presentation, nutrition is the foundation for which everything else um, builds on as far as our child's um, immune system, their growth, the development of chronic disease over their lifetime, and then ultimately um, even their success in school. If you are brand new to doTERRA and um, would like more information about how, how to get started, these are four of the different um, starter collections that I would recommend. The Healthy Start Kit really has all their top 10 essential oils that you would need um, to really address pretty much everything you would want to um, help your child with. There's immune support, respiratory support, sleep, um, lice prevention, cleaning, um, all these things that um, we talked about today in this presentation. And when you're on our team, you get a private wellness consult with me and um, exclusive access to our team Facebook group, um, education mod modules, um, lots of essential oil resources, and um, of course, free oils, which everybody loves the free stuff. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording and we can start taking some questions. Thank you for joining us.